Welcome to the fort, kid. That was a look at AMC's exciting new series, Into the Badlands. The network is hoping the new show will fill the martial arts void on the small screen with star Daniel Wu. The action-packed martial arts genre is loosely based on the classic Chinese tale, Journey to the West. And I am so happy to say that Daniel joins us now to tell us more. Good morning, Daniel. Good morning, Carly. How are you doing? Good. Congratulations on this new show. I'm a huge fan of all the shows on AMC. So are you excited to have your new show a part of this network they're putting out uh, some fantastic television are they not oh yeah tremendously they've been a great partner all the way through in creating this show and I've been executive producer on the show as well so they've been great throughout the production process and everything so it's really proud to proud moment to be standing tall with all the all the roster of AMC shows yeah and the reviews on this have been fantastic so how do you describe what this new series is and I love that it's kind of again filling that void in regards to martial arts this is something a little bit different that I don't think we've really seen yet on any of the networks yeah in fact right our now. main goal was to try and create something that no one's seen on American television before and create this kind of dynamic action to bring to American audiences. Um, the story is quite quite complicated, but it's also very simple. It's it's uh, we're, the story takes place in a dystopian American future about 500 years from now, where society has kind of reset itself, and the area of the Badlands is run by seven barons. Each baron controls an industry like uh, oil. Uh, my baron, who's the most powerful baron in the land, controls opium, and he has an army of clippers. And I play the head clipper. Uh, the regent named Sonny. Um, and then on top of that, there's all kinds of political intrigue and um, inner house struggles as well as uh, good martial arts kick butt action. <laughs> yeah, we can see that right now. And touch on the popularity of martial arts. What do you think it is that makes it so fascinating to watch on TV? And I think people are really going to love that there is a show now surrounding this. Again, it's, yeah, it's relatively I think, new. Yeah, I mean, I think people like to see amazing stuff that happens in action and stuff like that. And I think. Um, Nowadays, with the UFC and the popularity of MMA, I think a, a larger, a wider audience is understanding what martial arts is all about. So they kind of want to see that in, in their televisions or on screen. But mostly they have to go to like Asia to watch Hong Kong films or things like that to see that kind of action. Now we're bringing it to American audiences on uh, AMC. Well, and it'll be interesting to see what this show does to continue the popularity for this as well. Have you always been into martial arts? Give us a little background on your story. How did you come into all of this? Yeah, I mean, when I was young, I grew up in California, and um, one of my heroes was uh, Bruce Lee. And then I remember one day when I was seven years old, my grandfather took me to a movie theater in Chinatown to see Jet Li's first film, Shaolin Temple. And from that moment on, I was like, I got to learn Kung Fu. And so when I was 11, I started learning martial arts, and I've been practicing my, my whole life. Well, it's and then when, did you, get into to my film when did you get into acting? Uh, acting came much later in 1997. I went to university, studied architecture, graduated, and realized that wasn't the profession for me. So I went to Hong Kong for a soul-searching break. And um, I was scouted in a bar to do a TV commercial. And then a month later, the TV commercial came out. A director had seen it and asked me to play the lead in his, um, in his film. And I was like, you're crazy. I've never acted before. Uh, I didn't speak Cantonese at the time, which is a language that's spoken in, in Hong Kong. I grew up speaking Mandarin and Shanghainese. Um, and, and I said, I actually turned it down. And then um, for a month, he kept calling me every day, trying to convince me to do it. In the end, I, pr I promised him. I said, look, if you don't blame me for screwing it up, I'll give it a try. And uh, <laughs> so we did it. And then uh, three months later, we started filming, and I fell in love with the whole process. I finished the film. Two weeks later, he recommended me to another director. and. Uh, within that year, I did six movies. Um, and 18 years later now, I've done 60-something movies in Hong Kong. Wow. Well, and we are so yeah. excited that the American audience can now see you. And as we close, what do you hope people you know, get from this new show? What are you excited most for people to watch? And what do you hope they take away? Well, I think there's a little something for everybody. Obviously, people who are into the martial arts genre stuff will be really excited for the show. But I think there's a really compelling story here with a lot of compelling characters. I think for any MC show, um, that's a very basic requirement. And I think this is an interesting story that you don't have to be into the martial arts. There's, um, there's a story of a female baron who's trying to take control, and she has very feminist ideas, and I think the, the ladies might get behind that. Um, there's a, a political intrigue that's happening within the House of Quinn with his two wives fighting for his attention. Um, there's a lot of intrigue and, and interesting stories that are happening besides the martial arts. So it's a very rich and layered project for everyone to kind of enjoy. Yeah, well, it looks like it. Daniel, congratulations again. We're excited to see it, and we will be tuning in. All right, thank you.